Good morning and welcome to Inside South Florida. I'm Dave Azer. Today, why being in a permanent relationship is better for your health than being single. Plus, former Miami Dolphin Tuan Russell and the great work he's doing helping local kids get a better education. And a really cool art and music event you're going to want to check out. That and more as Inside South Florida starts now. Dr. Lisa Paz is a marriage and sex therapist who's counseled thousands of South Floridians about their love lives. Here she is on why being in a permanent relationship is better for your health and when is it time to have the talk with your kids. Dr. Lisa Paz, it is always great to see you. Dave, it's always great to see you. I'm so excited to be here. Okay, we've got some research and we've got some studies to dive into. The first one is new research suggesting teens who use smartphones are more likely to engage in sex. The obvious solution is never give a teenager a phone. That is the obvious solution, but probably the most unrealistic solution. So, I mean, for all the parents watching in 2013, right, because I think it's great that we're talking about the new studies coming out because everyone's on the resolution. This is the year to talk to your kids about sex. So what this study is sort of saying is not that your teen is necessarily going to have sex earlier, but the information, the planning, and also the being solicited is more available to them via smartphone. You could theoretically just disable texting or internet or things like that, right? Right, and so what one of the researchers out in California was saying was we haven't really thought out, we as a parent population, haven't really thought out the ramifications of kids having 24-hour clockwork to internet. I, I don't know the technology behind how much you can and can't right. disable at this point, but sort of the take home message from all of this is you gotta start talking to your kids. If you, I mean, you should have been already, mm -hmm. but. That, that's a much bigger conversation for another time that you're here, but you know, in, in a, a minute or so or whatever, is, are there a couple of really good messages when having that conversation with your kids that you wanna make sure you, you tell them? Yes, one, practice first. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious, Steve, you gotta practice because not everyone is really at ease talking about intimate issues and your kids will pick up on that so fast. What I love about this study is that what researchers are saying is people that are together permanently for the long haul actually engage in much healthier behaviors. Even if those behaviors include smoking and drinking, the bigger picture of life health is more in place. And people that are unmarried were 2.3 times more likely to die sooner. I know. Really? Yeah, it, smoking and alcohol factors being accounted for. So this was not like a nominal study. This was really saying, this is a pitch for the aisle. So really, all of the going to the gym and you know eating healthy, it's like, let's find the mate. Instead of seven minute abs, it's seven minute mating set. I don't know, you need to incorporate that into your daily life. Well, I'll tell you, I thought that this was really relevant for the South Florida market because we're also fountain of youth obsessed, right? And everyone is sort of trying to keep it young and figure out how to extend our life. And apparently, yes, this is the way to do it. Playboying around is not necessarily <laughs> your ticket, Dave. <laughs> Dave, what do you mean? I'm not married. Um, but, <laughs> but thank you for that. Is that in here? Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's, it's funny because, you know, you always hear, like, every stand-up comedian is like, my wife, you know, I want to kill her, and she makes my life miserable, and all the bickering. But Well, so here's the deal. The reason is because ultimately when you're married, you have an accountability mechanism. And so what research is showing is married people are more likely to make doctor's appointments, to have a square meal instead of sort of a microwave bachelor meal, to have a walking partner and an exercise partner, or to travel and sort of be enriched. And so it's sort of a, a, a built-in here's your checklist type of thing. It's funny, the last girl I dated uh, did not even want to ever use a microwave and told me we shouldn't even have one in the house, so I should have stayed with her. Well, I mean, you right. might have put a few years on your life. I might have. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I can get her back. Uh, all right, the third study that we have, non-traditional working class couples who choose not to get married still have the gender role expectations around the house. Yeah, this is really interesting. And actually, men are gonna come out looking less and less elevated in this one. Oh, we can we can add it past this. Yeah, time. well, listen, I'm gonna represent for the females. So what, what we're seeing now, right, is a trend towards either women in the workplace and or couples that are choosing to cohabitate but not necessarily marry. So the relationship looks a little different than the standard wife at home, husband is breadwinner, we walk down the aisle to live longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the gender roles are still in place. And so women are getting the short end of the stick here because the expectation for a clean house, a hot meal, is still sort of in play, even though the outside work really looks different. So how do we fix that? You know, 
how do, how do couples living together, what do they do to, to fix it? I mean, I think at the outset, if you are going to live together, not get married. It's really important. I see this in my office all the time, too. It's really important that you talk about what your expectations are. Like in my house, and I like to think of myself as a modern woman, I'm not taking out the garbage. And that's just the way it goes, right? And it's not expected. And so little things like that, couples really need to sort of sit and not take for granted. Who is taking out the garbage? My <laughs> husband, bless now, his garbage bearing soul. <laughs> <laughs> now, how does that conversation happen for the first time? And when does that conversation? Was that like a look at, I'll marry you, sure. But you need to know, <laughs> my hands will never be in refuse. There will be no trash. This will not happen. You know what ends up really happening with couples is they don't have these discussions, and then when something ticks the other one off three years into the relationship, they're like, and by the way, and then they start using these leveraging roles, you never take the garbage out. Right? I think it's really just a sitting down before you move in with someone, and it might feel awkward or contrived at first because we're not primed to do it, but do it, right? I'm telling couples, do it. Sit down and be like, let's talk about who's in charge of what. What are gonna be the roles? If I'm paying 50% of the bills, are we doing 50% of the housework or am I still doing 80%? Because you need to know that and it can't sort of be in the wings. Do you recommend living together before getting married, finding all this stuff out? Here's what's interesting. Research says that couples that live together before they get married have a higher divorce rate. However, right, that's what the research says. I think it's great. To, to live together before. I think you really, I mean, you get to test drive the car, yeah. no? But, well, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't liked one of the cars yet, and apparently to, <laughs> to buy it. Um, why, why do you suppose it's a higher divorce rate if they live together first? Because they don't take the marriage piece uh, in, a, in a sacred way, I right. guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, right, they've already sort of established a rhythm of bickering, of comfort level, versus couples that first cross over that, that you know, that image we have of the groom carrying the bride over, um, it, it has a different sort of specialness to it. And I think they start off the cohabitation with a different theme around it or a different flavor. All right, so people want to get a hold of you. They want to come see you. They want you to help them with their life and their love. How do they find you? They should go to my website, drlisapaz.com. That's pretty easy. That is pretty easy. Can you come back on the show every single week? Listen, Dave, you know you are my favorite person. I will do anything that you say except take the garbage out. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the next thing I was actually going to ask. Uh, love you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having right. me. You look super handsome as always. We're going to keep that part in. Yeah, right? go get married, okay. Dave. I'm on it. All right. Mom. I'm on it, matchmaker. Interview's over. <laughs> now. Thank you, Dr. Paz. You're the best, and I'm not just saying that because you're trying to set me up. When we come back, former Dolphin and Hurricane Tuan Russell is going above and beyond to help local kids get a great education.